morning. I hope and I believe all of you are doing well. So welcome to the YouTube live class where we'll try and simplify the topic of uh, glaucoma drugs, the anti-glaucoma drugs. So before we begin with the session, a quick nod whether the audio visual is all good. Okay, amazing. So what we are going to do is we are going to learn the concepts and uh, some mnemonics of remembering the anti-glaucoma drugs. Today we will focus on, uh, uh, you know, understanding which drug acts by which mechanism. And then in the next session, we will have part two where we will discuss some of the new drugs and the adverse effects. You know, the tricks to remember the adverse effects. That is what we would be doing. So first, tell me how many of you find this topic difficult. Now, why am I uh, taking this topic for today is there were a lot of requests on the group asking for glaucoma drugs. So that's the reason uh, that I this was the topic that came to my mind the first. So please let me know in the live chat how many of you find this topic difficult of the glaucoma drugs. And, and what exactly do you struggle with in that topic? Yes. Okay, so Nusat and Mednomic are forgettable. Okay, so we'll try and make this a topic uh, in such a way that we remember it forever, even if we don't revise it before the exam. Okay, now uh, what's the plan for the rest of the, uh, you know, the day is, Today, 5 p.m. on the Unacademy app, uh, we have the free live class like we have almost every day. KBMD, that is Khan Banega MD, the live quiz of uh, fast five clinical questions. The fast five clinical lengthy questions, basically it is through the MCQs, we learn and revise the important topics. Okay, so yes, uh, let's start with this uh, topic. So some quick facts about aqueous humor, you know, so Basically, what is glaucoma? Glaucoma is your increased intraocular pressure. There could be visual field defects, uh, right? And there could be your cup, uh, the cupping that can be seen. Now, where is this aqueous humor produced? Basically, it is the increased pressure because of the increased aqueous humor. So we need to know the production and the outflow of the aqueous humor. Aqueous humor basically comes from the plasma itself. Okay, so from the blood vessel, from the plasma, we have the aqueous humor which is produced. From where it is produced? It is produced by the ciliary processes, the ciliary body. So it is secreted by the non-pigmented epithelium of pars plicata region of the ciliary body. So the site of production is ciliary processes. It is derived from the plasma. What processes are concerned? It could be diffusion, ultrafiltration, or active secretion. Remember, the majority is produced by the active secretion. The outflow, coming to the outflow, we have two outflows, the trabecular outflow and the uveoscleral outflow. That is how aqueous humor produced and it is there is an outflow. It is taken away as well. There's a continuous cycle which is going on. The trabecular outflow is the major outflow component that we have. 90% is by trabecular and 10% is by uveoscleral. So let's have a look at this image to understand the topic. Okay. Uh, when the radiology class is starting for FMG batch Heyman on an academy plus, um, it will most likely start tomorrow, 2nd of March, evening 7 to 9 is when we'll have. Okay. All right. So uh, look at this one. So this is the ciliary muscle. We have the ciliary body here. 
But from the ciliary body, we have the aqueous which is produced. Okay, we have the aqueous which is produced. Now, this entire, the anterior segment, it has in front of that iris, you have the anterior chamber and you have the posterior chamber. So, this is the lens, we have the anterior segment, anterior chamber, posterior chamber. So, aqueous humor is produced, it goes from the posterior chamber to the anterior chamber and then it is taken away, then there is the outflow. So we have this trabecular, you can see this trabecular sort of thing, trabecular outflow and we have the uveoscleral outflow. So we said that 90% of the outflow is trabecular, 10% is the uveoscleral. And from where this aqueous humor is produced? From the plasma. Okay, remember all these important points. These will form the basics of understanding the concept of glaucoma drugs. So basically in glaucoma, we want to decrease the aqueous volume. Okay, so imagine that this is the tank which has water and you want to decrease the water content. So what can you do is either you stop the inlet, you close the tap filling the water or you increase the drainage, right? Similarly here, when you want to decrease the aqueous volume, either you can decrease the production so that the aqueous volume is reduced or you can increase the outflow. Outflow, we said trabecular outflow or it could be uveoscleral outflow. So we need to know that which drug acts where, which decreases the production and which increases the outflow. Okay. So I'll tell you first the concept and then I'll tell you the easy um, trick also to remember the drugs in each category. So basically the aqueous is produced from the plasma, the vessels that are there, when there is vasodilatation and when there is vasoconstriction of these vessels. Tell me which of these will increase the aqueous production. Is it vasodilatation or is it vasoconstriction which will increase the aqueous production? Which one will increase the aqueous production, vasodilatation or vasoconstriction? Basically, I'm asking you, when will the fluid go out more? Is it a vasodilatation or it is vasoconstriction? So, same thing which happens in inflammation, right? In inflammation, there is vasodilatation. Vasodilatation leads to the increase of hydrostatic pressure. So, more aqueous will be produced. Okay, more aqueous will be produced. Let me see if I'm able to see the light chart. Absolutely. So, vasodilatation. So, vasodilatation by increasing the hydrostatic pressure, there would be your increase the aqueous production. There would be increase the aqueous production. So, now tell me the uh, receptors. Which receptor causes vasodilatation and which receptor causes vasoconstriction? Beta and alpha. Which receptor causes vasodilatation and which causes a constriction? The mnemonic to remember is A, B, C, D. Right? It is A, B, C, D. Alternate alphabets A and C. That is alpha causes constriction, vasoconstriction and beta causes dilatation. Okay, beta causes dilatation. Alpha, A is the first alphabet, alpha 1. Beta, B is the second alphabet, beta 2 right so basically vasodilatation uh, you have your uh, beta and you have alpha receptors okay alpha and beta so thinking logically if you want to decrease the aqueous production that means you do not want vasodilatation that means you want vasoconstriction right so what drugs will we use will we use beta agonist or beta blockers we do not want vasodilatation, so we do not want beta to be activated. The drugs used would be beta blocker. Okay, the drug used would be beta blocker. Vasoconstriction caused by alpha, so alpha acting, alpha agonist would be the drugs that would be used, right? So the first point to be learned that it is beta blockers and alpha agonist which are used in glaucoma, okay? Even if you don't want to remember the concept, you want to just remember with the easy tricks. Remember glaucoma may, it is B, B and A, A which are used. That means it is beta blockers 
and it is alpha agonist which are used okay a for agonist okay so remember it is beta blockers and alpha agonist which beta blocker is commonly used in glaucoma which beta blocker is commonly used in glaucoma we have timolol okay we have timolol which is used commonly is it selective beta 1 selective or is it non selective beta blocker is it beta 1 selective or it is non selective remember our mnemonic for beta selective blockers what was the trick for beta selective blockers your beta blockers from the alphabet a to m they are generally beta 1 selective except your navy volol coming after m okay so uh, remember the mnemonic was nbe ka bum right the mnemonic was nbe ka bum is cardio selective so timolol t does not come there it is non selective right non selective now non selective beta blockers the disadvantage is they can cause asthma they can precipitate asthma so they are avoided in asthma because beta block karke they can precipitate asthma so in those cases we can prefer cardio selective beta blockers like betaxolol okay we can prefer betaxolol levobunolol are the beta blockers used all right so that is about beta blockers okay that is about beta blockers alpha agonist drugs alpha agonist it could be either your alpha 2 agonist or it could be a drug which acts on all the receptors alpha 1 alpha 2 as well which are the alpha 2 agonist ans pharmacology mnemonics which is alpha 2 2 is your dye right so we have clonidine clonidine acts on alpha 2 right clonidine brimonidine apraclonidine these are your alpha 2 agonist okay these are your alpha 2 agonist so even your brimonidine dye that is your alpha 2 the one which acts on all is epinephrine okay it's your epinephrine what is the prodrug of epinephrine prodrug is rhyming with epinephrine that is dipivephrine okay dipivephrine so remember that since epinephrine it acts on all the receptors so basically it will increase the outflow also and it will decrease the production also okay it will increase the outflow and it will decrease the production as well the clonidine valley they decrease the production basically okay so in our first group that we have okay the trick to remember here the drugs which decrease the aqueous production remember it by cab okay remember the trick to remember is easy trick to remember is cab so remember cab when you are traveling by cab that means you are not walking it is decreasing your productivity that is how you can remember cab decreases the productivity that is the production what do we mean by cab carbonic anhydrase inhibitors alpha agonist and beta blockers these are the drugs carbonic anhydrase inhibitors because they will not provide bicarbonate required for aqueous so which are the carbonic anhydrase inhibitor drugs which are the carbonic anhydrase inhibitor drugs carbonic anhydrase inhibitors basically they do not provide bicarbonate so aqueous is not produced so it could be systemic carbonic anhydrase inhibitors or it could be topical as well important question that acetazolamide is given systemically it is not given topical right it can be given iv it can be given oral as well topical acetazolamide zolamide wale dusre jo hai dorsal amide brinzol amide these are are uh, these are carbonic anhydrase inhibitors which decrease the aqueous production acetazole amide so remember these drugs basically act by decreasing the production acetazole amide is your first drug to be given in angle closure glaucoma okay we'll come to the angle closure glaucoma what drug and open angle glaucoma what drug is given remember this is the first drug to be given in 
anger closure glaucoma it is the fastest acting it decreases the production very fast so before even giving pilocarpin a myotic in anger closure we need to give acetazolamide okay now coming to the outflow okay coming to the outflow so your pg which analogs are used in glaucoma another important question which analog is used in glaucoma PGE, PGI, PGF2 alpha, which one is used? So, yes, it is PGF2 alpha analog. Okay, it is PGF2 alpha analogs which are used in glaucoma. Okay, so remember the PG, the prostaglandin analogs used are PGF2 alpha. And how do they act? Remember F for flow. Okay. So basically, they increase the flow. Which flow? The uveoscleral flow. Okay. Not the trabecular outflow. You have trabecular and uveoscleral. This is very important question that prostaglandin analogs, they act via increasing the uveoscleral outflow. You can also remember the drug here, U for unoprostone. So unoprostone is also the prostaglandin analog. You have your Latanoprost, that helps you remember it is prostaglandin. Latanoprost, Bimatoprost, these are the prostaglandin analogs. They act by increasing the uveoscleral outflow, right? These are now the drug of choice in, these are the drug of choice in open angle glaucoma. Primary open angle glaucoma, the drug of choice is PG F2 alpha. Open angle means the angle is open, but still the, uh, you know, the IOP is high. So we increase the outflow by your PG F2 alpha. Okay. So remember the uveoscleral outflow is your PG F2 alpha analogs, PG F2 alpha analogs. So the rest of the categories of the drugs which are remaining, uh, they will come here. Okay. So they will come here in your trabecular outflow. Like your myotics, they will act by increasing the trabecular outflow. Epinephrine acts by all mechanisms. So even that increases the outflow. Okay. So let us have a look at the uh, mechanism here. I'll come to this first. Let's have a look at the table. So what all drugs are used? We said beta antagonist that is beta blockers b b alpha agonist that is a a then you have myotics okay what's the mechanism of action of myotics in glaucoma how do myotics help and where are myotics very useful okay so myotics are used in angle closure glaucoma okay angle closure why are they used we'll talk about that so look at this one so, development of angle closure glaucoma is what is shown in this image. So, in this image, you can see that there is midriasis which is happening. And because of that, you can see the iris making the contact with the lens. Okay, the iris making the contact with the lens. And that is why the aqueous which passes from posterior to anterior, it cannot go from posterior to anterior. So, when the aqueous is there in the posterior chamber, it is causing a bulge on this iris. Okay, it is causing a bulge on this uh, iris. And this angle, because of the bulge, this angle which is there, the iridocorneal angle, it will be blocked. So the outflow will be blocked. Okay, so basically it is blocking the outflow. Now what happens when we give myotic? Okay, when we give myotic, this iris is thinned and it is pulled away from the lens. Okay, the iris is pulled away from the lens so the block which was here, okay, the iris contact with the lens is lost and that is why the flow is restored, okay, the flow is restored. So, uh, yes, this will be available later as well, okay. So, remember that uh, this is how myotics help in angle closure glaucoma. So, what happens again, let's quickly see, midriasis, the iris comes in contact with the lens, the aqueous is not able to flow, builds up behind. The increased pressure narrows this angle. So, especially the people who have narrow angle already, they are at more risk of developing angle closure glaucoma. Can you tell me, uh, thinking logically, what will precipitate angle closure glaucoma? 
is it dim light or is it brightness a very important question what will precipitate angle closure glaucoma is it dim light or it is bright light what will precipitate angle closure glaucoma absolutely right it is dim light darkness which will precipitate that's why we tell those people uh, people not to go into the darkness because with darkness what will happen there will be midriasis in dim light there would be midriasis and this will precipitate by this mechanism and therefore to relieve this myotics are the definitive drug in angle closure glaucoma so remember that myotics are used in angle closure glaucoma never uh, never your midriatics are contraindicated all right so tell me uh, which parasympathetic or sympathetic system which system causes myosis is it parasympathetic or it is sympathetic another an important area where we tend to get confused what causes myosis that is constriction of the pupil what causes the constriction of the pupil parasympathetic right so remember constriction is by your cholinergic drugs that is your parasympathetic you can also remember it this is a trick to remember constriction is by cholinergic you can remember it as parasympathetic ps is your pupil sphincter pupil sphincter is causing the constriction of the pupil dilator pupilla causes the dilatation okay so parasympathetic causes pupil sphincter activity leading to constriction so that's the reason that we will use cholinergic drugs okay we will use cholinergic drugs now we know that uh, basically we want acetylcholine cholinergic wala action it could be your direct cholinergic or it could be your indirect cholinergic what do we mean by direct and indirect direct means acting on the receptor directly the drug is pilocarpin okay the drug is pilocarpin indirect is your acetylcholine esterase inhibitors which are decreasing the degradation of acetylcholine increasing acetylcholine like your ecothiophate okay so physostigmin ecothiophate these are your acetylcholine esterase inhibitors so these are another group of drugs all right but a very important point to be remembered that even before giving pilocarpin in angle closure glaucoma what drug should you give even though pilocarpin is the drug of choice it's a definitive drug in angle closure because you want myosis you want to relieve that iris and the lens contact even before that give acetazolamide okay acetazole amide iv is your first drug to be given why because this is the iris because of the increased pressure by the aqueous humor this iris has gone into pressure paralysis it has gone into pressure paralysis so the pilocarpin will not be able to act it will not be able to cause myosis so we need to decrease the pressure first and the fastest acting drug is acetazolamide so if the question is fastest acting or the first drug in angle closure it is acetazolamide then we will give myotic that is pilocarpin and if the question is definitive treatment not definitive drug what is the definitive treatment so basically these patients are predisposed to developing angle closure glaucoma if they go in dim light so we need to give alternative pathway for the aqueous humor so even if the lens has come in contact uh, iris has come in contact with the lens we can create a hole in the iris so that even if it comes in contact the aqueous humor can flow from that hole in the iris so what surgery can we do here what surgery can we do for angle closure glaucoma right to create the hole iridotomy can be done right we can do iridotomy or we can do peripheral iridectomy so that it does not come in contact with the outflow tract the angle is not reduced so iridotomy or peripheral iridectomy or we can do 
ट्रेबेक्यूले का पार्ट निकाल दो या आयरिस का पार्ट निकाल दो वी कैन डू ट्रेबेक्यूलेक्टमी ओके रिमेम्बर वी कैन डू आईरिडोटोमी आईरिडेक्टमी ट्रेबेक्यूलेक्टमी बट नॉट ट्रेबेक्यूलोप्लास्टी If you are asked a question which surgery is not done, okay? Which surgery is not done in angle closure glaucoma? It is just trabeculoplasty. Just doing trabeculoplasty will not help. The angle is where we need to work, the narrow angle. So either iridectomy, trabeculectomy, or iridotomy, okay? Or iridotomy is what we need to do, okay? And what laser do we use for uh, iridotomy? For Tomies, we use ND YAG laser. Okay, for Tomies, we use ND YAG laser. All right. Clear with everyone? Got the concept? So remember that angle closure glaucoma is like an emergency. The patient will present with acute pain. Classical history would be pupil is fixed, dilated, vertically oval. Right? There is watering of the eye. So, acute pain, think of angle closure glaucoma. First drug is acetazolamide then give pilocarpine then do iridotomy or other surgeries and you need to do iridotomy in the fellow eye also if the patient has presented with right side complaint you need to operate on the second side the left side also because basically if the angle is narrow it would be narrow in both okay it would be narrow in both so that's the concept here remember that's the role of myotics in angle closure glaucoma so suppose if i ask you the role of atropin in angle closure glaucoma, okay? Atropin and angle closure glaucoma, is it given or is it contraindicated? Will you give atropin in angle closure glaucoma? A very, very important and a frequently asked question. IV mannitol also acts on the same principle, Nuzad, basically hygroscopic, so it does not allow the aqueous production. Atropin and angle closure glaucoma, will you give or will it be contraindicated? See, atropin is anticholinergic, right? It is your anticholinergic. We give cholinergics, anticholinergics will cause midriasis. Remember, atropin is contraindicated. So they ask you a question. Which of the following drugs is contraindicated in angle closure glaucoma? It is atropin because it causes midriasis. We do not want midriasis in a patient of angle closure glaucoma. We want meiosis. All right. So coming back to this table, so you have cholinergic agonist, which basically increase the outflow, like we saw uh, the iris coming ahead. Prostaglandin analogs, letanoprost, bimatoprost, carboprost, they increase the outflow, the uveoscleral outflow. Carbonic anhydrase inhibitors are the drugs which can be given systemic as well. Rest, all of them are topical. Carbonic anhydrase inhibitors can be given systemically also like acetazolamide and they decrease the production. Okay, they decrease the production. So beta blockers, they decrease the production. Alpha are the ones like your epinephrine valley, which have action on both. Production also is decreased and outflow also is increased. Cholinergic are basically increasing the trabecular outflow. Okay, they are increasing the trabecular, trabecular outflow. Prostaglandin is uveoscleral. Carbonic anhydrase inhibitors is decreased production. Again, let's have a look. Drugs used in glaucoma decrease production increase outflow decrease production is cab c a b that is your carbonic anhydrase inhibitors acetazolamide is given only systemically it is not given topical these are given topical right then you have alpha 2 agonist brimonidin apraclonidin which decrease the production Beta blockers, cardioselective betaxolol, non-selective, you have your timolol. Increase the outflow, uveoscleral is your prostaglandin F2 alpha analogs, letanoprost, bimatoprost, unoprostone also. And you have increased trabecular outflow. You have myotics, pilocarpin, physostigmin, direct, indirect, and alpha agonist like epinephrine, ditiwephrine, which acts everywhere. 
okay which acts everywhere it decreases the production it increases the outflow as well okay and so let's have a quick look at this what is the drug of choice in primary open angle glaucoma that means the angle is open yet there is increased intraocular pressure what would be the drug of choice in your open angle glaucoma so basically the angle is open the trabecular iris a angle is open but probably 90% of the flow trabecular it is not working well so what we will do the alternative pathway that is the uvo scleral outflow what drug will we use we will increase the uvo scleral outflow by giving pgf2 alpha analogs like latanoprost now these are the drug of choice earlier the drug of choice used to be beta blockers but now the drug of choice are pgf2 alpha analogs all right in primary angle closure glaucoma what is the first drug okay even in open angle glaucoma if the drugs the medical treatment is not working then we can do surgery that is your trabeculoplasty we can modify the trabeculate to increase the outflow or we can do your trabeculate tummy as well okay trabeculoplasty is done in open angle not in angle closure in angle closure glaucoma the first drug fastest acting is acetazolamide given iv or oral that first decreases the pressure the definitive is the myotics that is pilocarpin to be given only after acetazolamide is given and the definitive treatment is your surgical treatment right it is either your iridotomy or it is iridectomy iridotomy is preferred or it is trabeculectomy not trabeculoplasty okay so those are the definitive treatment okay those are the definitive treatment for angle closure glaucoma is this uh, clear with everyone the mechanism of action of the various drugs i hope i'm able to see the live chat okay all right so the rest part of the glaucoma drugs that is your new drugs and the side effects which drug causes which side effect we would be seeing in the next class okay that we would be seeing in the next class that's going to happen day after tomorrow okay i'll uh, give you an update on that on the telegram group when do we have the next youtube live class and remember that the drug of choice for glaucoma in children remember in children c for c it is your carbonic anhydrase inhibitor the topical carbonic anhydrase inhibitor dorsal amide is the drug of choice in children so just to summarize whatever we have learned either you decrease the production of the aqueous humor or you increase the outflow decrease production is by cab carbonic anhydrase inhibitor alpha agonist beta blocker increased outflow is your increased trabecular outflow or increased uvo scleral very important question pg f2 alpha flow increase karte hain uvo scleral ka trabecular is increased by the myotics and dipivefrin okay myotics and dipivefrin that is the entire thing that we need to remember midriatics are contraindicated in angle closure myotics are definitive drugs but before that give acetazolamide in open angle glaucoma because probably the trabecular outflow is not working well we increase uvo scleral outflow and we prefer pgf2 alpha analog okay that is your latanoprost okay that's your latanoprost all right everyone so that was about today's session when are we meeting next we are meeting next at 5 pm on the unacademy app it's a free live class and we will be discussing mcq solving skills through mcqs we discuss the topics it is your fast five clinical lengthy questions kpmd it's a free class you can enroll i'll be mentioning the link in the description and in the comments you can enroll using the same and if you are asked for a code while you are enrolling that you can use the code dr nikita okay you can use the code dr nikita so i hope till here at least uh, uh you know i hope till here the topic is clear 
the rest of the part of glaucoma ducts will be covered in the next session okay so thank you so much for joining in goodbye take care and keep studying keep revising and keep winning thank you so much